Finally, we're going to hear from Doug Kell, who's the CEO of the BBSRC, and he's going to just tell us about um, how we make sure that this report, uh, which you've all got, I hope, uh, will influence the Research Council's thinking and where we go to next. Thanks very much indeed, Robert. Well, I can obviously add comparatively little as the last speaker to what others have said about the value of our public engagement activities in general and in this particular synthetic biology dialogue, both for researchers and research funders, as well as the broader public. I agree absolutely with Dave, and we were, of course, very happy to respond to the suggestion that we participate in this process from the word go, following on, as, as you've heard from the Dalma and Martin report. And it's worth commenting that science is not an event, but a process. The synthetic biology research agenda is set within the framework of activities that have been going on already for quite a long time. Molecular cloning is nearly 40 years old, after all. And the important thing, then, is to recognise what's going to happen to our dialogue as a result of this process. It is very much the beginning. The average length of time for a new discovery in the science space to turn into, say, a commercial activity or something that has a policy impact is often between 10 and 20 years. And clearly, then, we are very much at the beginning of this process, not even in Churchill's phrase, at the end of the beginning. Unsurprisingly, it is recognised that the British public is sophisticated and shrewd, and they might perhaps be a little sceptical that we were merely doing this for effect, to show that we had done a public dialogue, and then it would be kicked into the long grass. And that's very much not the case. And a very obvious reason why not is the obvious enthusiasm that everyone had and retains for discussing this very topic. One example recently that, that came to me was, was when Venter published his paper on the rebooting, as he called it, of a, a bacterium. So the amount of public interest as judged by the BBC website was absolutely massive. It was very much the story of the day, and, and I and others went on television to talk about it in response to the very obvious interest that was there. So to this end, again, let me too thank everyone at the dialogue and contributed to it. We very much listening to the findings and very much recognising one of the chief findings of that, that the research councils must continue to do more than we already do to ensure that the public is engaged in determining what kind of activities are appropriate to research council funders and to ensure that the kind of science we fund is not in discord with society's aims and aspirations. What we're going to be doing through the summer, both with EPSRC's SIP panel and our own Bioscience and Society panel and with the dialogue steering groups is to digest the reports and the conclusions that have come from them and then develop our responses, which will be quite wide-ranging. One particularly interesting finding that struck me was the one that was mentioned, that overall researchers underestimated their individual contributions while recognising that the field as a whole could have a massive contribution. This is quite unusual in a society in which normally one is expected to large up one's contribution to show it's possibly greater than uh, it really is. And that's very interesting, and uh, we'll be wishing to look into that to understand why it is that is, because there's some quite general uh, implications for research dialogue there. Also, in particular, we'll want to have useful dialogues about how we meet the aspirations to people to be involved in the policy-making process.